What's your name? John. John. John has rightly said there's a hidden agenda behind abortion. What could possibly be the hidden agenda behind abortion? I'm asking you the question. I'm asking you people listening to this video. What could be the agenda behind abortion? Depopulation. Depopulation? Anyone else want to approach something? I've got a different theory behind it. I've got a different theory behind abortion. I've got a different theory behind murder. I've got a different theory behind racism. I've got a different theory behind hatred. I've got a different theory. But come on, this is Speaker's Corner. This is interactive. We've got freedom of speech here. John has just felt free to speak about the vaccinations. He's felt free to speak about the hidden agenda behind abortion. Please, can someone else just put forward, postulate something, tell me what could be behind aborting babies? Take your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ away and with all the LGBT, all to downgrade Christianity and other religions. Right, so the same thing as John has said, we've got someone in, uh, one of the listeners here, one of the camera people has said, take away your belief in Jesus Christ, take away the belief that the United Kingdom have had for over 2,000 years. Do you all know that Paul spoke to Welsh people? The Apostle Paul spoke to visitors in the Middle East from Wales. They went back to Wales and took the gospel to Wales. So here today, we are speaking about abortion. We're speaking about the hidden agenda behind abortion. The scriptures say the Lord is near to all those who call on him. Psalm 145, 18. The scriptures say the truth will set you free. The scriptures say you knit me together in my mother's womb. Psalm 139, verse 13. The scriptures say, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest for your soul. Matthew 11, 28, verse 9. The scriptures were inspired by the Holy Spirit. God speaks to us through His Word. Psalm 138 verse 2 says His Word is transcendent. His Word is above His name. So when God reveals Himself to us in the Scriptures with His beautiful mind, with His loving kindness, with His heart of goodness, and He's saying to us, have children and multiply. A man lies with a woman. Look after your children because they are arrows in the quiver. He knows what he's talking about. God cannot lie. Therefore, we should be listening to him. And when he promises 4,000, 5,000 years ago, when God promises, and get, God cannot lie, he's never broken a promise. When God promises that he will send a savior, who is the savior? The name Yeshua means salvation. So you've got Psalm 110, Psalm 2, Psalm 22. You've got all these Psalms, you've got all these scriptures. Not one history book written by any Middle Eastern people have refuted the Old Testament. This is called the Tanakh. The Tanakh is all the books of the Old Testament. The point I'm making is the hidden agenda behind abortion, the hidden agenda behind Islam, the hidden agenda behind everything is all satanic. Exactly. It comes from Satan. That was my question Satan to you is Lucifer. My original question to you. Your original question to me is what, is, what do I think the agenda was? No, it's, I didn't have a chance to say. What I was going to say is most people who believe what I, what I fact checked and I said, they say that right now it's Satan again. It's good against evil. It's Satan against God. That's what is happening right now today with the agenda that we're spoken about. So, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. John is saying. That's happening right now today. This is what Satan is speaking about. I spoke to an astrologer last week. She does not believe in Jesus Christ. I said to her, her name is Jay. I said, Jay, you don't believe in Jesus Christ. Do you know that God has sent a strong delusion in this world? She said, what is a strong delusion? I said, I don't know. But can you think of a stronger delusion than a man being a woman and a woman being a man? Aren't there only two genders? She said to me, yeah. She said, I think everything's gone crazy. I said to her, but God promised 
that he would send a strong delusion to those who don't believe. And therefore, if you look at the, the state of this world and how many people, how many millions, billions of people do not believe that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, then you understand why God is choosing this time to send a strong delusion. Now, you're all following this. You're following the strong delusion. You're following the LGBTQ agenda. You're too scared to speak out on it. You're too scared to die. You're too scared that you're going to be hurt or injured speaking out against what you know is not true, what you know is not false. This is called towing the line. And the more that the United Kingdom tow the line, the more that the United Kingdom do not allow freedom of speech, the more that we participate in this false narrative, the narrative that has holes in it, the more we will be led astray. You know, a man called Salman Rushdie wrote a book called The Satanic Verses. A lot of people didn't want to read that book. A lot of people didn't think it was worthwhile. As soon as the fatwa was put on um, Salman Rushdie, his book became a bestseller. He was just stabbed um, a few months ago, stabbed 22 times, stabbed 23 times. There you go, that's the end of freedom of speech for him. He's under protection for the rest of his life. Not too far from me, we have a lady that was stabbed here in this park. She was stabbed because she was raising a polemic. This is called Speaker's Corner. This is where you're allowed to actually speak. This is freedom of speech. Here's a man, I don't agree with one word that comes out of his mouth. We can stand here all day long and argue with Steve the Atheist. His worldview is ludicrous. He's an atheist and he knows he's, he knows, he knows he's not an atheist. He's just suppressing the truth. But this is a man who I disagree with, but we can still be friends. What has happened to debate in Speaker's Corner? You can't be a masturbate. <laughs> oh, here we go. I'm sorry the intellectual capital has fallen, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry that he's lowered the standard. But here's the truth. If we can't debate these things, if we don't have freedom of speech, if she's not allowed to come here, if she's not welcome here by the police. Last week, Bob was kicked on the floor because of words that came out of his mouth. Hatun's been stabbed. I've been pushed. I've been hit on the head. We have a right to speak out against abortion. We have a right to speak out against Islam. We have a right to speak out against Jehovah's Witnesses. We even have a right to mock and cheer at people like Steve. We have a right to do it because this is Speaker's Corner, the last place in the world where you've got freedom of speech. So when I'm telling you about loving kindness, and I'm telling you about love, and I'm telling you about joy, and I'm telling you about peace, why would you want to hurt me? Why would you want to tackle me? Why would you want to silence me? Is it because you are following the agenda of something else? Is it because something inside of you is saying you hate Jesus? Because that's what he said, ladies and gentlemen. He said, they will hate you for my name's sake. That is why Hatun has been stabbed. That is why she's been pushed. That's why Bob was kicked last week. That's why different people... Look at Uncle Asif. How many times has Uncle Asif been pushed to the floor? How many times have I been hit? Yeah, at this railing by lamppost man. All because we're saying words to you. We're speaking about God's love. We're speaking about this picture here. Babies being aborted. Come on, something's wrong. Doesn't matter what your worldview is. I would like to listen to your worldview. I'd like to debate your worldview. I'd like to have a, a friendly conversation with you. Speak to anyone that believes. So sorry, Jason. Sorry. It's my big stomach. I'd like to speak to anyone that's got a different view. Here's a little poem for you. Here's a little poem. Freedom of speech is kushti unless you're Salman Rushdie. Why did you come down to Speaker's Corner and give it a bash? If you're not successful, you can always knock around Hatun Tash. Okay, so that's a big joke. What a stupid parody. What a stupid satirical joke to make at the expense of Hatun and Salman Rushdie. The problem is, 
it is only stupid and satirical because it's it's true. This is actually happening today at Speaker's Corner. There are people here with a hidden agenda. That hidden agenda is to do harm to Christians. Edward Little was arrested. There's a court case going on. He stopped, went into a mosque, got a gun to come here to kill our friend and our sister Hatun Tash. Why would he do that? What could pull a man with so much hatred that a person that he doesn't know, he wants to murder her? There are people that I'm looking at right now that have muttered in my ear, one day, one day, meaning that one day I'm going to be taken out. My family don't want me here because there's so much aggression and so much hatred. I want to be here because of freedom of speech and because, most importantly, God loves us. How do we know that God loves us? How do we know that He will, um, He would do anything for us? Because He promised Jesus, He promised that He would make a way for saving us. This is early on. The first gospel is not Matthew. The first gospel is in Genesis chapter 3, where God promises, promises that He would make a way for us and that He would give us salvation and He would trample on the head of the serpent, on the head of that great Satan, the satanic spirit, which is causing this world, ladies and gentlemen, around you before your very eyes. You all know it. You can all see what's happening. We're killing our children. We are destroying one another. We're fighting with one another. We hate one another. We would even judge a person by the color of their skin. Can you believe that? That there are nations in this world today which consider people with a different color skin tone to them. They consider them to be less than them. There's even the same color skin. Racism to the same color skin. Even just a, a different shade of white, there's racism. I've experienced anti-Semitism at Speaker's Corner. I've experienced racism. I've heard people reading out from the Hadith that Muhammad called black people raisin heads. Now, when you are challenged with this, when your prophet actually married a six-year-old and consummated that marriage when she was nine years old, surely you would stop and go, who's the better person? Who is a pure person? Can you imagine this? That not one second of Jesus' life went by without with him sinning. Not one second. The perfect human being, it's impossible. Because in Romans chapter 3, the Bible says, all people sin, all human beings sin, but Jesus never sinned. So if Jesus never sinned, not for a nanosecond, not for a microsecond, then look to him because he's the perfect man. So here we have an example of what love is. Going to the cross, 2,000 years before Jesus was crucified, Psalm 22 promises that his hands would be pierced, that he would go to the cross and he would die for our sakes. 2,000 years before Jesus was crucified, the prophecy rang true. Who are you going to call on? Jesus, who never sinned, or anything else? Agnosticism, atheism, Islam, Roman Catholicism, whatever you want, call on that. But the name of Jesus, brother, I would welcome them a question. But answer my question first. What other name is going to save you? What other name is going to save you than the name of Jesus? What is God's name? Exactly. And one of God's names, one of His 99 names, is Yeshua, meaning salvation. Promised all the way through the Old Testament, promised all the way through the New Testament, the name Jesus, which you deny which you say is Isa, which is not Jesus. Your Isa is not the same as Jesus. Why have you only got one lady's name in the whole Quran? Why is it a Jewish lady? Yeah, one lady. I'll give you 500 pounds if you give me another lady's name in the Quran. Her name's, so show me where Aisha's name is in the Quran. In the Quran, not the Hadiths. The name of Jesus is the only name that we can be saved by. The name Yeshua is the only name we can be saved by. You can't be saved any other way. So why are you going to call on a prophet's name? And why are you going to look to a prophet as the example to all mankind 
that married a six-year-old and consummated the marriage when she was nine, that is going to have delicate young boys in heaven, that called black people raisin heads, that owned slaves. Muhammad owned slaves. Jesus, Jesus loved us so much as God, the very essence of God, that he went to the cross to die for us so that we could all live together with him. And you are looking elsewhere. How can that be? How can humanity look elsewhere? I've got a good idea. I can't afford this baby in my stomach, so I'll kill it. Hey, that's not a good idea. We go to God and he runs to us. We call on his name and he runs to us. He loves us. His thoughts to us are more numerous than the sand. Still looking for Aisha's name in the Quran. It'll be interesting. When, when I'm laid to rest, I'm put down. The words will be, God giveth, the, the, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. That's be the law. God giveth, say again? The, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. That's yeah. be the law. Right. So the Lord had given the baby yeah. in the womb, the life, because it is a life. Yeah. As soon as it's conceived, it's a life. Yeah. Who are we to destroy? Amen. Amen. Did you hear that? The Lord has given a life in the womb. Those women, those lovely women, and I know many that can't conceive, that can't have a baby, are not desperate for a baby. You know what? I'm not talking about pointing a finger at those ladies and judging them. I'm saying to them, Christians, you people watching this, love them. Go to them and love them and say to them, come and live in my house. I've got a spare room. You can have the spare room. I'll help you get a job. I'll help you with babysitting. Just don't do this. But that's you. You can only do a certain amount of people. God says, come to me and I'll take away your burdens. Put your burden on me for my yoke is light and I will walk with you. There's nothing better than walking next to Jesus, you know. There's nothing better than walking yoked together with Jesus. Because when you're yoked with Jesus, you don't have any burdens. You don't have any tiresome weights. Your burden is light. You can know peace and joy. No matter what your situation, no matter what you're struggling with, no matter what drugs you're struggling with, no matter that you can't afford to feed this baby in your stomach, no matter all of these things, Jesus can. And Jesus does. And Jesus says to Peter when he's got to pay taxes, Go, get a fish out the water, open it up, in its stomach you'll find a coin. That's what Peter does. He goes, he gets a fish. The, the, the Pharisees say to him, uh, should we pay taxes to Caesar? He says, Who's, whose face is on the coin? Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. You know what is God's? You. You and you and you and you. You all belong to God. Even the people like Street Mike that don't believe in God, you belong to God and He loves you. He loves you so much that He died for you. So it's not that you don't believe in God. It's not that you, that you believe that God's not here. That's not true. The truth is that you're suppressing that truth. The truth is you're suppressing that truth because you want to carry on in your sin. And that, my friends, is the biggest pandemic in this world. The pandemic is not COVID. It's not the, the false vaccinations. The, cande the pandemic is sin. Sin will kill you forever. Sin will let you end up in hell. What gives you hope and life and love is the peace of Jesus Christ. You will never know the truth like the truth in Jesus. You will never know love like the love in Jesus Christ. You will never know peace like the peace of Jesus Christ. So, in love I'm saying to you, these poor girls, ladies, these poor people that are being told to, to kill their babies. These poor people that are being told to follow this prophet and this teacher. Even these poor people that are being told to give their money to the church so that they will be blessed. Please step away from that. God's not in prosperity teaching. God's not in you giving money or um, uh, paying indulgences. God is there because He loves you. You go to Him freely. You go to Him in love. You don't have to take anything. You just take yourself to God and He will hug you and hold you and love you and He will provide for you. And the last thing I'm going to say to you today is this. God has written a last will and testament for you. Not only is Jesus your mediator, not only is He your Savior, but He's also your testator. He's also written a last will and testament for you. 
for you, madam. He's written your last will and testament. You are going to get what you can't imagine. For you, for you, T. For you, Adrian. For all of us. For Hatun. You, you can't imagine. Your brain doesn't have the ability to imagine what we're going to have in heaven. So please, call on the name of Jesus and be saved. Because that's the only way you're going to see the glory of God. That's the only way you're going to know what true love is. What real love is, is to call on the name of Jesus. He alone can save us. There's no other name of salvation other than the name of Jesus. God bless you and keep you and make His face to shine upon you. And God protect you in the name of Jesus. Amen.